You are now in part three of our Sewing Stuffed Characters videos, so keep watching to complete your sewn stuffed character. So those are all the types of stitching that you'll need to know. We are now ready to connect the back piece of our stuffed character so that we can add stuffing in a little bit. This next step will take a while. So to get it started, you're gonna line it up so that it matches. Now I can see that even though my character is kind of symmetrical, that definitely does not line up. Usually the cause of this is that the back piece is upside down. So try flipping it over and lining it up again. That is a million times better. So once you have it lined up, just like we pinned on our pieces so they didn't move, you can grab a pin and pin it together. If you don't have a pin to pin it together, that's okay. It just makes it a little easier for me. And you don't have to put in a million pins. I like to put in two or three just to hold it in place. So I'll do that over there. I'll put one over here to keep his face in the right spot. And I'll put one down the bottom. So you can go ahead and thread your needle again. You can either continue to use the same color that you've been using, or you can choose a new color. That's up to you. So we're ready for the most exciting step of the process, which is getting it sewn together so that it's ready to be stuffed. When choosing this area to let it be stuffed, you wanna choose the simplest area. So for me, that would be down along this edge. So I want to leave a space that is about four fingers wide because you're going to be using your hand to stuff your character. So I'm gonna have a four finger space on my straight edge. Your, your simple edge could be a straight edge or it might be on a smooth curve, but you don't wanna pick an area that has a lot of indents or turns. That's gonna make it harder for you to close later. So you pick the area where you want to begin. I'm going to leave this space right here and start right here. Now I'm gonna call these pieces of bread, okay? This is now your character sandwich. So you're gonna open your bread, tuck your needle inside the bread. You're only going through one piece to start. This is only for when you start, pull it all the way through. Now the reason we opened our bread and tucked it in is because when you close your bread again, that knot will be hiding inside. So now, this is important. When you are sewing this shut, we're gonna do a whip stitch, which means we're gonna go around the edge. So you're gonna loop it around the edge this time. I know I told you never loop it around the edge when we were doing the eye, but that's because we were doing a connecting stitch. So here we go, we're up through the top. You're gonna to come all the way up, come around, poke up through the bottom. Pull it all the way up, come around, poke up through the bottom. So I'm still keeping my fingers very close to where I want the needle to come out, pinching the fabric together as you go. My fingers underneath act as a guide, so they're moving along with me while I'm sewing. It helps me know where to put the needle. So you can see you're moving right along. You're up through the front, come around to the back, poke up right next to it. If you poke up and you're not right next to it, don't push the needle through all the way. Reverse it back out until you find a spot that is very close to the first one. The stitches should be close together because if they are not close together, your stuffing will have a place to escape out the side. That is why it's also important to continue to check that you are coming through both pieces of your fabric, front and back. Now you're going to notice that since this is a very long distance, the perimeter of your character is the biggest space. You're going to be running out of string before you get very far. You can choose to continue with the same color string or you can switch your color if you have more than one string. So this blue is running out. I still have a good foot of it left, but that'll probably only get me to the end of the arm. At that time, I can choose to continue with blue or to switch my color. Now, remember we said three inches of string is the minimum that you can do. So I can probably get about two more stitches out of this before I'm at three inches of string. 
A good measurement for three inches is your pointer finger. If you line up your pointer finger with the string and it's about the same size, then you're going to want to cut that string. Now, before you cut it off, you need to tie a knot. So here we go, split your sandwich. Make it like a little hot dog bun there. You're only gonna sew through one piece so that your needle comes out in the middle of your sandwich. And then you're gonna do the loop and swoop to get the knot on the inside of your sandwich. Cut off the extra string. You're going to tuck that knot inside so that you cannot see it anymore. Huh, get it? Cannot see the knot. So we have that one string finished. Like I said, you can now switch color or you can restring your needle with the same color. If you choose to buy your string, it might come in a large pack like this with multiple colors, or you can buy them individually and they are very inexpensive. They're like less than 20 cents a piece. So it might be a good idea to pick up three, four, five different colors if you want to be switching your color. And you might wanna pick up two of each color. Meaning if you choose yellow or if you choose blue, you might wanna pick up two of the same color so that if you wanna do it all the same, you don't run out. So far I've used uh, four different colors on mine, but that is gonna be up to you how many you use. So you can continue with the same color, which will save you a little bit of money. Um, but if you choose different colors, you can grab individual pieces. You do not have to pick up a full multi-pack. So I'm just knotting off my new string here and I'm ready to start again. Now here's a reminder before I let you work on your own, you're gonna open your sandwich. You always wanna start inside your sandwich. So I'm opening my sandwich and I'm only poking through one layer. That way when I pull my string all the way through, I tuck the knot inside, close your sandwich again, and you should not see the knot sticking out. So I'm gonna continue working on mine. Please continue working on yours. This may take several sessions. It's probably not something that you're gonna sit down and do all at once. However, if you like watching a movie or a television show at home, this is a great activity that you can just kind of sit, relax, lounge out, and work on your sewing. This is a short string reminder. So you can see I'm now at the end of my second string almost. If you pass by a pin that you're not using anymore, you can remove it as long as your stitching has passed the pin. You can always move that to another section or you can just remove it completely. So as I come to the end of my next string, just like the end of your first string, you need to tie it off. Now we should tie it off in between. So open your bread slices like a taco shell. You wanna have them split apart. Then you're going to come through just one of the pieces, pull it, open up your bread, and tie the knot inside the bread. Remember, it should not be any shorter than your pointer finger. If it's getting anywhere close to your pointer finger, it's too short, and you're going to have a hard time tying that knot. So tuck that knot inside, and you'll continue on with your next string. I can tell already that this was one string, two strings, I'll probably have three, four, five, before I get to six strings, and I'll probably be ready to stuff it by the bottom. So you're nearing the end of your sewing project. You have it almost back to the beginning where you came from. Remember, we are leaving that four finger space. So I have a few more stitches to go here before we're ready to stuff. It's very important that you leave yourself enough room to get the stuffing in, or you're going to have a really difficult time with the next step. But remember, you can always use a pencil or another skinny object as a plunger to help you get your stuffing in. So here I am going all the way back to the beginning where I started at the bottom for my easy stuffing location. And there we go. You do not have to cut off the rest of your string, okay? You're gonna keep that so that we can sew it shut later. So don't cut that off, just kind of let it hang off to the side. If you have any pins left in your stuffed character, take those out because you don't want any more pins holding it together. The only thing holding it together now 
should be the stitching around the entire outside. It should look the same on the back as it does on the front. You should have stitching all the way around. So now it's time to grab your stuffing. I like to keep my stuffing in a little sock. Yours might be in a plastic bag or another bin, but if you just let it out, it kind of poofs way up. When you're stuffing your character, you wanna start with a little bit at a time. So you just wanna take a pinch full. If you try to stuff it all in at once, you're gonna get a clog. So make sure you're only taking a pinch full at a time. Go ahead, you wanna get it as close to the top sections as you can first. So he's stuffed, you can smush him up. It's not gonna hurt you. Make sure your needle is not in there if you try to smush him, but you can smush your guy up like when you're putting on long socks so that you can get that stuffing all the way to the tippy top. Really get your fingers in there. You can see why you needed enough room. Now that whole pinch that I did only did that one top horn. So you wanna try again, get another piece and get stuffing. So I've put in a handful of stuffing little pieces already, but you can see it's starting to get stuffed up those pieces before that were three fingers wide, you can see how now they've shrunk. Now that I've sewn them and added stuffing in them, now it only looks like to be about my thumb width. So you wanna make sure in the beginning, that's why that was so important. You're just going to keep stuffing. You want it stuffed enough that it's fluffy. So if you've run out of stuffing, just get some more. You don't want to have any places where it feels empty because it will end up being floppy but you also don't want it to be so stuffed that it's hard. You want it to be squishy like a stuffed animal. So keep taking those pieces and make sure you're going to your furthest edges first. So I'm still working on getting some stuffing up here in the head before I worry about the arms or the body. Take some more. It takes more than you think. Okay, I'm just about there where he's all looking very stuffed. He's very smushy. I don't feel any areas that don't have any stuffing in them, so that's good. Then if you have any extra, you can just put it back in your stuffing bag and return it. But it's time to close him up. So if you have a pin from before, you're gonna wanna use that pin. You can also use a safety pin for pins. Um, if you don't have anything, you're just gonna have to keep it squeezed shut like you're trying to squeeze your taco together. But if you have a pin, that's gonna help you. So straight through, bend it to the side, straight through again, it should pop out the top. You can see how that holds it closed. And then you continue sewing, just like you were before, making sure to go through both pieces. Remember to move your helping hand along with your needle, keep it close together. It should act as a guide. All right, I'm back to the beginning. I've got it all the way closed up. You're going to want your knot on the back again. So you can kind of stick it through the one piece so that your thread is coming out the back so you don't see it on the front. And do your final loop, swoop, pull, thumb, get it tight. Cut your string as close to the knot as possible without cutting your knot off and remove any leftover pins you may have holding it together. So that's it. I hope you had fun making your sewn stuffed character with me today. It should be all closed up. Any extra stuffing you can just put in your bag and return, but it should be super smushy and I hope you love it. Thanks for sewing with me. Bye friends.